Hello everybody, Corey here. We're going to go over the Ulti Trades and Holdings for Friday, May 24th. Just a reminder, I'm not a qualified licensed investment or financial advisor. I just gather the data, present it to you so you can make your own decisions and form your own opinions. As a reminder, Yieldmax ETFs are extremely risky and this is probably the riskiest one of all of them. Uh, so please make sure you ensure ensure that you understand the risk associated with these and how they work. Um, and know that these are income ETFs. Um, I don't even know what we've been starting with. But let's go. We're going to go to the daily tab here. Uh, this is the one that I used to do separately. I'm going to sort this. Oh, wow. So we have a, a new... 123% IV SRPT, which is a therapeutics company. For some reason, some of the sector data is not coming over. Uh, let me check real something else real quick. Oop. Okay, so we had 7,825,000 outstanding shares yesterday. And today we have 8,250. So we are really having a lot of people buy into these. Um, that's 175 What's that? 425,000 outstanding shares in one day. Uh, I may have a math wrong, so double check me. But, wow. All right. So, anyway, so we have SRPT with the highest IV here uh, as of today. Sorry. And then we have Celsius here, uh, which has been our lowest IV for the past week or so uh, at 48%. Um, let's look at our prices here. Is that today? That is today. Okay. For some reason, I thought they were different. Let me double check this over here. Yeah, we had two. Man, why does it keep doing that? All right, we have two that were red. So let's sort these. We had two red, and everybody else was green. But let's look at the top first. So we had Ulti. It went up 2.54%. Or was that 36 cents? And then the S&P went up 0.7%. It looks like we only had two red tickers. The therapeutics company uh, was down 3%. And Carvana was down 1%. Um, while everybody else was up. So look at the biggest winners down here. MicroStrategy was up 9%. Xeom was up 8 Mara up 6 SMCI and Celsius were up 4%. Um, as far as trades go, and let's just do that, um, since we don't really, since we're doing all this in one video now, uh, so what they did was they paid to close out of Novavax, um, so here, they, it, the strike price was fifteen fifty. They ended up paying eighteen cents to a share to close this out. However, um, the stock actually ended up closing. Hold on, I don't want to misspeak. I got to go back a day. It actually ended up closing at fifteen fifty, exactly, which means it would have expired worthless, right? Um, but who knows? Um, you never know what's going to happen. But anyway, so <clears throat> they went ahead and paid to close that out, which costs $80,000 uh, for $0.18 cents a share. And they also closed out the um, – sorry, I was just thinking about this. That Anyway, they also cl closed out the shares. Now, what I did do – we only had the one, so I went back and compared, you know, since we have shares now. Um, they actually paid fourteen seventy nine a share here, and they ended up selling it for fifteen fifty two a share. So they actually made some um sorry, I saw a notification. So okay, so they sold them for fifteen fifty two. And they originally bought it for fourteen seventy nine, 
So they actually made it 73 cents a share times 444,500 shares. So 325, or yeah, almost 325,000 um, that they made off of these shares themselves. So anyway, I just looked that up, but uh, they did close that out. Uh, so that's what this is down here, the one trade that was done for today. So anyway, and then if we go to the net assets, so this is where we stand. So again, you see right there, well, let's do this. We see Novavax there closed out. Now there's another one, Zim, at the top. So it is here. However, um, they, let's go back to yesterday's holdings. So the strike price on this one was $21 a share, but it closed at $21.04. So it's four cents over. So I don't know how they do this and what system and, and who these were for or whatever, or if it's the different brokerages, like are they going to automatically um, cash these out because it's over the strike price period, which is only, even though it's only four cents over, um, I don't know. Is it going to be like an automatic or opt-in? I don't know if it depends on the brokers. I don't even know. But... I, my assumption is this going to be that they get assigned on these and whatever, um, I guess, until or unless we see something different. But the thing about this one is, is their average share price here uh, for these is nineteen twenty a share. So obviously this is the short call, but the shares are here that go with that. So that difference, so the $21 strike, so 21 minus 19.20, that's a $1.80 increase times 3,2,4,0,1,2. So that's 324,000 shares, which is $583,000. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But the rest of these, uh, they actually ended up expiring worthless since we're here. We'll just go ahead and cover that. Um, as you can see, they all expired. So <clears throat> obviously this is our strike price. And then I just used the other days and I pulled in a formula and this is where we closed out. And then I did a difference. So anything that was positive would have meant those were the ones that were over. So... Um, so anyway, back to here. So this one right here, you know, may not be there. We'll see what, what we get. And I, I might have said Monday, but Monday's a holiday. So we'll see Tuesday um, what this looks like, what this fund looks like. So anyway, so that takes care of the going over, you know, whether we were expired or not, uh, going over the daily, and we already talked about the trades. So if we just look at the holdings, well, all we have are stocks because um, they will not, just in case, you know, you're new to these or whatever, but it's Friday and they won't set these up for the week until the first day of the trading day of the week, which in this case is going to be next Tuesday because Monday is a holiday. Um, so there'll be a bunch of, you know, buy-ins that day. So this is where we sit right now. We're just holding all this stock and all this cash because actually if you look down there at the cash, we're sitting on a a bunch of it, but my guess is, I guess, is all the, the new buy-ins, um, yeah, because they're not purchasing, or they're not doing anything right now, um, making any trades, so all of that's just all those new outstanding shares, or those new shares that just came in, or that they, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Sorry, my, uh, throat is, uh, I don't know. It's just not been too great the last couple of days. But anyway, um, 
and then I went through these and, you know, just as a reminder that the other day, I think it was Monday when I worked in the office and then I don't even know what happened that day. But either Monday or Tuesday, I failed to save the trades probably for the first time um, since I've been doing this, ult, since I've been doing ulti since inception around February 29th. So basically, I used the holdings, uh, the market value on the holdings to try that for that day uh, to just do an estimate of the possible, um, you know, funds that they could have received. But anyway, based on that, right now we have our short call premium up there um, at 21 cents. What I will do is I'll look at this, you know, in a little bit more in depth this weekend. Make sure all the numbers are right and everything and see where we stand, uh, but just to make sure. And then I'll try to make sure I do my weekly videos this weekend. But anyway, I just want to make sure I went through all of this with y'all. Uh, hope y'all have a great weekend, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.